Hello everyone, this is Robert and I've got a problem. I have completely outgrown my old filament storage system, which means I have filament just stacked everywhere. It's stacked on my workbenches, it's stacked on the 3D printers, it's just overflowing out of every crevice. So I need to come up with a new system to store and organize my filament. And as we all know, once a YouTube channel gets to a certain size, you're basically required by YouTube to come up with some sort of modular design that you can share or sell to your viewers. So I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone and I'm gonna show you my new modular filament storage system. So as always, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the design. So if you just want to see the finished thing, go ahead and skip to the end. No one is going to judge you. So as far as the design, I always like to approach everything with the idea of constraints. How do we kind of constrain this down and figure out what we actually need? For me, I wanted something that was relatively dense storage. I don't want the actual storage system to be overly fancy or complicated and take up a lot of extra room. It can't be bulky. Secondly, I want something that I could easily identify different filament types. Right now, I'm just kind of lumping them all together and I kind of have to look through and be like, oh, that's PETG, oh, that's ABS, oh, that's this. I want something where I can kind of organize the different filament types together and be able to very easily identify the different types of filament. And I also want this to be very modular and expandable so that I can kind of expand it as I go, stack it vertically, stack it horizontally, and it's also something that I can use in different depths. So with the density, I wanted something that uses more than just one dimension. Like a lot of people have just kind of the shelf up on the wall and that's really good, really economical, but you're not really utilizing depth. You just kind of need a lot of linear space. So let's take a look at the drawer system that I came up with. So this is what one single module looks like. You basically have two pieces. You've got the drawer itself, and then you have the frame. And this is stackable and modular, and then just accepts the frames. As you can see, I'm using the drawer slides pretty much for the main structure on both of these components. In the case of the frame, it is basically just these two 3D printed pieces. This is all printed out of ASA. And then we have the drawer slide here, and that is the main structure. And there's holes along the side so you can stack it horizontally and vertically. For the drawer, I'm using a front piece and a rear piece, and then there's supposed to be four of these middle supports. I only have two in place on this one right now. And then that kind of constitutes the main drawer structure. And this is just half inch PVC for the actual support for the filament. And the nice thing about this whole structure is that depending on the length of your drawer slides, it just kind of moves in or out. So there's really nothing in here that dictates what size or what length of drawer slide you need to use. This happens to be a 24 inch, which gets me about eight or nine rolls, but you could do a 22, an 18, 16, 12, whatever you end up doing, and you'll just need to cut a different length of PVC to accommodate, but everything else works the exact same way. So if we fit these together, you can see that it basically just acts as a simple drawer mechanism. Now, one of the downsides obviously is when this gets all the way out, it's gonna be tippy, but there are holes for mounting it down to your work surface. So I'm gonna be um, screwing these down into my shelf, not a problem. And you can see that there is minimal space around the actual spool. And this is of course by design. I wanted this to have the maximum density possible. And that's also why the drawer slides are kind of moved down a little bit. If I had them up here, the whole thing would need to be just a lot wider to accommodate that. For the drawer fronts, um, this whole thing sits flush. And there are two different options that I have. This is actually the kind of light version. And this one is meant for a, an additional faceplate. So this is an example of a faceplate that is on one of the lights. But then I also have a variant of it, something like this, that you can have a more solid faceplate and then put a handle on it. So there's a couple different options there. 
So if we take a closer look at these frame pieces, there's a couple little details I want to point out. Um, first off, you can see where the drawer slides attach, and I actually matched the profile as closely as I could for the slide, and these fit in there pretty tight. You kind of need to really fit them in there, and really the fasteners are only there to keep them from sliding forward and backward, which is kind of nice. So we're not relying on the fasteners to hold anything. It is more the profile of the part that's holding everything in place. The other thing is there is not a unique part for the front and the back. They're interchangeable, so you can use the same part for the front section as the back section. So it makes it a little bit easier to print all these out. You can also see that there's some little nubs on the bottom. This is used not only for little bumpers on the bottom, but it's also used so that you can more effectively stack them vertically, just kind of helps key it in place, but there's also fastener holes on the top and the bottom. Of course, on the bottom, we have countersunk, so those would be used to drill down into your workbench. And on the top, this is a hole size for a through hole. This is um, meant for basically a thread forming screw or a wood screw. And then we also have these on the sides for joining these horizontally as well. I've been alluding to this project for some time on my channel, and if you remember the video I did a few weeks back on the 3D printer shelving unit thing, this is the modular system that's gonna go in there. I'm going to end up doing a two by seven grid of these, which is gonna give me about 14 drawers, and that's gonna be anywhere between eight and nine rolls of filament per drawer, so it's gonna give me around 120 rolls of filament storage. The thing that I really like about that, though, is that it's 14 individual drawers, so it should allow me to very easily organize between PLA, PETG, ABS, and other things, so that I can have each one kind of in its own little drawer, which would be really nice. So now it's time to finally start building this thing. I'm gonna start with the frames and then we'll move on to the drawers after that. The frames are pretty simple. You basically just have the frame pieces and then the drawer slides and that's it. They just snap into place and then you add the screws, have the um, frame piece on the front, frame piece on the back, and that's all there is to it. Um, adding the rubber bumpers on the underneath side just so they kind of key in and stack nicely. But other than that, there's really not much to the frames. And I should mention that all of these files are available in the description. You can click on that and go to printables and you can find all the files. For the drawer slides, I'm using, um, I think it's Lantin brand. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I have links to that as well. And as I said earlier, you can use pretty much any depth that you want. The design scales, it doesn't really, you don't have to change any of the files to use a different depth. I'm using 24 inch, but they also have a 22 inch if you're a little bit more limited in your overall depth for where you're gonna be putting these. So now that the frames are built, it's time to make the drawers. The drawers are a little bit more complicated. You've got the front piece, the rear piece, the PVC pipes, and then the little middle supports. And then of course you have the drawer slides that mount onto the outside. When I was initially designing this, I tried to pick the appropriate distance between the PVC pipes that would hold the majority of spools. The problem is if you get a spool that's too small, it will sit too low in this, and then it will kind of um, hit against the bottom of the frame. But if they're too close together, then you kind of have a little bit of stability issues and the um, spools will kind of want to fall over and it's not very good. So this was kind of the best compromise that I could find. Another thing that I realized when prototyping this is I kind of wanted it to where you could just kind of hammer in the end piece and the front plate into the PVC and it would just kind of fit in there nice and snug and then the middle supports would just kind of hold everything together. But what I found is that it will kind of flex outward. With the weight of the spools, it will kind of flex a little bit, and then the whole thing sags. So it was absolutely necessary to have screws on the bottom of this, and that kind of keeps it from torquing outwards, if that makes sense. It really, really helps hold everything in place, and it is kind of necessary, so it is an extra step. However, in the design of this entire thing, I managed to make it only two fastener size. You basically have a short one that is used for attaching the drawer slides to the frames, and then you have a longer one that is used for pretty much everything else, including attaching each modular unit to the next one. So you really only have to worry about two fastener sizes for this full thing, which isn't too bad. 
Now that I finally have enough frames built, I did a quick test to see if my calculations were right and if I could get seven across, and all that worked out great. So now I can start installing them. I'm only doing 10 of these up front, even though I can fit a total of 14. I just bought a 10 pack of the drawer slides and that's just kind of where I'm starting. Um, I'm doing these in a bank of six, and then I'm gonna attach those to a bank of four for the total of 10. And I started with kind of attaching these all together inside the shelf, and that was kind of a bad idea. It's much easier to attach all these together outside of the shelf and then put them in later. So for the second set of four, I did these outside, and then I'll just kind of attach those to the set of six that's already inside there. So now all I need to do is add that unit of four, bolt it to the original unit of six, and then add in the drawers. I'm gonna bolt this down to the shelf later. I'm gonna keep it free until I get everything all together. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is a fully open and not sealed filament storage system. I have always been a really big proponent of drying filament, so why did I design it like this? Well. I wanted this to be closed or sealed initially, but there was a lot of issues with that. So one of the cool things I think about this modular system is that I can have a different filament in every single drawer. So I can have PLA, I can have PETG, I can have ABS, and I can kind of individually separate out those filament types. Well, if you had this as a single sealed unit, you really wouldn't be able to dry all the filament individually, if that makes sense. Uh, PLA, ABS, they all dry at different temperatures. So, okay, each one of these modules would need to be individually temperature controlled. So then you're adding a filament dryer on top of every single one of these. Every single one of them kind of plugs in. You have a fan, a motor, a heater, all that stuff. It becomes very redundant. You could theoretically have one dryer for all of them, but it wouldn't get high enough temperature for some filament. It would only work for PLA, wouldn't work for others. I have seen some people that have kind of a dry box. I think Adam Savage had like this big dry box and he said that he like kept it at 20% relative humidity. That, that's way too high. It needs to be significantly lower than that. I like to be a lot closer to like 10, 15 at the max. So individually drying them is a problem. Uh, secondly, you could do something where you individually dry them and then bag them and then seal them, but you're talking about like a hundred plus rolls. That's a lot of bags, a lot of time, a lot of inventory, and then as soon as you open one up, then it's a problem. So really the thing that let me sleep at night after designing this is there is not a filament out there that I need to dry that I won't be drying when I go to print with it, if that makes sense. Any filament that I print with that needs to be dried, I'm gonna throw it in the filament dryer for the time of printing. If you're doing a 10 hour print with TPU, in that 10 hours, it can accumulate enough moisture to become a problem. So I'm already drying stuff as I print anyway. So yes, all of these are gonna be stored out in the open exposed to the moisture and elements in the air, and when I go to use them, I'm just gonna throw them in my filament dryer, dry them, and then print them that way. So that's kind of my solution here. I would love this thing to be fully dried, but desiccant packs really don't actively remove moisture from the filament. So even having this sealed with desiccant packs really doesn't solve the issue. I am always gonna still be drying the filament as I print. So I've got everything together, got the drawers in, and added some filament just to kind of test it out a little bit. And yeah, everything works out great. Here's what a drawer looks like, fully extended, no problems whatsoever. Um, it is not currently bolted down. Fun fact, this whole thing, if you think about it, if we're gonna be doing between eight and nine rolls of filament per drawer, we're gonna do 14 drawers, you're gonna have about 120 rolls of filament that is gonna be about 120 kilograms or about 300 or 260 pounds. Once you add in the actual structure, you're talking over 300 pounds, around 140 kilograms, something like that for this full thing. So it is a very heavy, big thing. So what we're gonna do in the next video is I'm actually gonna finish all of this off. Um, I've gotta make all these face plates. We're gonna do 
14 of those all the way across. Those will bolt down into this frame. And I also have these little um, 3D printed handles or poles that I designed that have a little label holder so that we can actually label each one of these. And I'm probably going to do something fancy with the fiber laser to um, label all those. And then I'm going to kind of talk about the full discussion on these. I want to get into how much it costs, how much it costs per roll of filament, because that's something that I was looking into in the very beginning. Some of the alternate designs, um, I had like five different options of different things that I was going to make in place of this and also kind of the pros and cons of going along with this solution. So all of that is going to be in the next video. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out the links down below. I have a link to this on printables so you can go ahead and download or change or design your own. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.